Hey there, welcome to my home and welcome to today's video, which is a huge vintage homeware haul. I've really been holding out on you guys because I've actually had a number of these items, well, actually all of these items since before Christmas. I bought a number of the items in kind of independent kind of vintage or antique stores or like Brocanti fairs and stuff when the lockdown restrictions were eased. And then I also have another kind of big bag full of things that I actually bought back from clearing my grandparents' house. So they're a little bit more nostalgic. There's, I don't think there's anything necessarily that like I brought back here that's like, oh, I really remember my grandparents parents using that but they're all things that my grandparents will have had for such a long time they definitely held on to things for absolutely ages and yeah they're all things that I kind of saw and saw you know I, I quite like the look of them or I thought it would be quite practical and yeah I'm basically rehoming them here at the Bluestone Villa that bag in particular will be a bit of a surprise for me because I got them just before the second before we, we went into the second lockdown and I had actually planned to share them in like a video or something and then I didn't do it and so I've left them in the bag and I've just I, I've not got them out since so like I've just got this big bag of things that has just kind of sat in my living room so I'm sure James will be very pleased that it's now finally probably going to be removed and things used and put places and all sorts so happy Thursday if you are watching this when this goes live um, but let's get into the video so I'll kick off with everything that I kind of purchased. Um, so first of all, I bought these sweet little, um, try and get them out from each other. They're like, well, they're cake, metal cake tin things. And they're kind of slightly different sizes. These were three pounds each. And they're obviously very rusty, kind of a bit rustic <laughs> as well. And I actually bought these to have tea light candles in them. So I use that on kind of our dining room table, which I really love. In this room in particular, I really kind of love adding more kind of vintage and rustic -y elements. I think it's a little bit imperfect in here in a good way. And we are using kind of more natural woods. And I think that really works nicely against kind of the like the, the black cast iron you can see behind me here. Yes, yeah, so I've really been loving these for my table. And as I said, I've been using these for tea light candles. And then for spring, I'm thinking of changing it up a little bit and actually using these to host like just individual like narcissus bulbs. So I don't know whether they will spring in time for spring. <laughs> I probably should have done them sooner, but I've really been loving seeing everywhere, particularly on Instagram, like people putting bulbs in like huge, like, you know, antique vessels. And I think they look incredible, but I just don't have anything like that at the moment. I'm kind of trying to use things that I already own. So this was one of my ideas. I could use these to do individual bulbs in, and then they could also be part of like my tablescape at Easter as well. So I bought these from a Bracanti Fair. They were three pounds each, which my mum thought was expensive, <laughs> but nonetheless. Next up, I've actually just had to bring this in from outside my front door. My mum also thought I was mad to buy this, but is this really cute? Cute is probably the wrong word, but it's really rustic old milk bottle holder. So we actually have our milk delivered um, and we have done since about June 2019 at this house. We have it delivered from Milk and More. I absolutely love it. There's something so old school about it and I don't think I'd ever buy milk um, from the supermarket again. I think I'll always have it delivered by a milkman. And yeah, I love it. So this sits outside my front door all the time. Um, I drop my clean bottles in it, a bit like you can see here when they're clean and, and yeah we have delivery three times a week and so I love it I just really wanted something that was a little bit rustic and rough around the edges rather than kind of like the perfect pristine ones you can buy from Milk and More etc and that was 16 pounds moving on next my next two items are actually candlestick holders if you've been following me for a while you know that I love a candle whether it's kind of something to hold candlesticks or whether it's kind of scented candles or what have you so the first items are these gorgeous um, green candlestick holders. I purchased these for £15 for the pair, I think. And these were bought from a shop called The Green Duck that opened up in Tunbridge Wells last year. It's a really kind of, again, like quirky, offbeat, eccentric kind of vintage store. And they've got lots of different offbeat items. I got these from them. And yeah, I thought they'd work perfectly in here. Obviously, we've got a green dining room. I'm planning to kind of layer up lots of different greens in here. So I thought these would be perfect. They do look nice in here. 
I have had them on the dining table. You might have spied them in another video. I don't think I've shared these with you like properly as in where I got them from previously. But anyway, um, but actually where they're like a greeny blue, they actually look really awesome. On my marble fireplace in my living room, we've got Hague blue on the walls and they just look really good against that. It just really complements it. And actually I would say they look better in the living room than they look in here. So I think that's gonna be their permanent residence. Next up are these beauties. Now, these will not be out all the time. They're not something that I would plan to have out all the time. I bought these from uh, White Finch Bakery in Mepham. It's one of my favorite places to go. They don't usually sell stuff like this, but she did a couple of days last year where she was. And I got this pair of candlesticks for 10 pounds. They're very OTT. They're very kind of big stately home <laughs> types. They looked awesome at Halloween with like black long candles. I thought they looked fantastic. So I think, yeah, those kind of wintry months, they look awesome. I think these will come out on my dining room table on the right occasion, but are not things that will probably be out all the time. But they were £10 for the pair, which I thought was a bargain. And I suppose actually, you could probably like spray these a brass as well. I've got a lot of brass elements in my home. So actually, if I wanted to get them to fit in even more, I suppose I could do that as well. But yeah, I thought these were thought these were pretty cool. They're just a bit fun and at £10 they were pretty inexpensive as well. I keep on having to get up because I keep on remembering things that I haven't got out as part of this. So the next thing is I really love, talking of milk bottles and milk bottle holders, I really actually love old vintage milk bottles. So I bought one in Bournemouth years ago and it is a ready breck one. It's like yellow and orange. I love it at this time of year in the spring. It's in my kitchen, it has daffodils in it and just like, yeah, it's really bright and fun and it just brings a bit of joy and a bit of a smile to my face. And I picked up a couple of others. I don't know if I'm gonna hold on to these. I might sell these. If you're in the market for some vintage milk bottles, let me know. But I really like them. It's not that I don't like them. It's more just, I kind of wondered, do I actually desperately need them really? And these have also sat in a bag and I haven't done anything with them. But I've got Cadbury's drinking chocolate one, which I thought was really cool. It says, please rinse and return to your milkman. Yeah, delicious, hot or cold. I just really love all of these. I just think they're a really quirky little, quirky little something to use as a vase. And then the other one is, never actually heard of this before, but I just liked that it was kind of a bit more of a muted tones and it felt really old fashioned. It's this farmer's wife bread. I've not heard of that. Um, but yeah, and again, it says, please rinse and return to your milkman. But yeah, I really, really like those as kind of, I use them as vases. So yeah, they may be quite cool, maybe out on a table in the summer months or lining stairs or something, or like like I do in the kitchen is a really, really good one. And that's how I use these otherwise. Excuse me, I'm also just take a sip of my, of my drink. Next up, we're gonna move on to the items from my grandparents. So all of them have remained in the bag, as I've already said, but there were two items I've already brought out and used a bit, so I'll share those first. So the first one were these, lovely glasses so these are some gorgeous champagne flutes so my granddad was actually in the wine industry um actually particularly the champagne industry and so he had lots of different decanters and different types of like wine glasses and champagne flutes and we all got to kind of take something basically and this was the set that i picked there are actually only two so it's a very small set and yeah i was just drawn to them i just thought they looked really really pretty and yeah interestingly when i got them back here i realized that they actually perfectly match another set i have not of champagne flutes but more of like smaller liqueur glasses that i picked up from an antique shop in Tunbridge Wells they have exactly the same pattern on the bottom even as well and I just thought that was really really bizarre I would say that these are like better quality they're like a heavier glass you can you can feel that but yeah I just thought it was so weird that I obviously already had a collection of glasses that were basically the same and I hadn't figured that out when I was <laughs> when I picked these I just randomly picked these so so yeah I was really pleased with these we use these at Christmas and yeah I just think they're beautiful and I have no idea of like their story or if they're yeah if there's a particular story or background to them but they might have been gifted my granddad had a lot of stuff that was like gifted as like retirement presents and stuff so that's possible that that was another one of those the other thing i picked up were these napkins now these are not napkins that i would be naturally drawn to in a shop if i was shopping for them but my nan just had so many different like 
uh, tablecloths and serviettes and napkins and what have you and she was really into hosting and throwing parties and big buffets and stuff and in fact when we were going through some of those things I found in so many photo albums so many different like pictures of like before and afters of buffets that they'd done she loved cooking she loved baking and she loved hosting and I also found a picture of I think it was in 1952 but it was nonetheless it was the year that they got married and it was their first Christmas in their council flat in Bermondsey in London when they first got married and honestly it was a picture of their table set up for Christmas and I thought how 2021 is that like my nan my nan needed Instagram obviously in 1952 but yeah because she loved hosting and stuff I just felt like it was such a shame if none of us took any of it and these were definitely the ones I thought was like the nicest and you could incorporate them in different table settings here. I actually use them at Christmas time um, just because I quite liked the greenery on them and we had like a lot of foliage on the table. I should have shared my table setup actually because I was really, really chuffed with it in the end. But I actually think they're really spring-like. They'd be perfect for like a Easter tablescape and what have you. They've got these gorgeous little daisies and then the green leaves and then they've got kind of scalloped edges here, which I, yeah. I really, really liked those. I thought they were really sweet. Okay, now we're moving on to things that I have no idea what is in this bag. And yeah, so I'm just gonna rummage through and just pick out the first thing that I find. Oh, those are some of the more of the napkins. Oh, these are different napkins. So actually, so I had that set, which is a set I said I as said I already used. And then I had this set, which interestingly is obviously made in a similar place similar place. I don't know whether she picked these up in somewhere like Canada or something, but again, they're like a silk satiny material and they're scalloped around the edges and then this one has a different kind of flower I think there is a spoon that goes with this as well but this was something really cute and a bit retro that I found it's a marmalade jar and it's just kind of like a plastic acrylic-y material but it's got this like these little oranges and greenery in the lid there and it should come with a spoon and I think there probably is a spoon in that bag somewhere but yeah it comes with a spoon. James loves marmalade but also I was just thinking how gorgeous because on like your breakfast table if you've got guests staying and what have you it's just really really lovely I just really loved it I thought it was really sweet and also feel like it's a bit of a nod to my nan because she made a lot of jams and stuff. She really loved making all of that stuff. So I always feel like it's a little nod to my nan on my breakfast table as well. I feel like, do you know what? Those glasses, I've not just got two, I've got more than that. I think I've got four. I've got four of these glasses, not two. That's what happens when you put things in a bag and you don't get them out again. <laughs> I don't know if you're set up in the same spot. My battery just went. This item definitely needs a wash, but it is kind of a bit of a retro. It feels like it's like 50s or 60s. It might be later to be fair, but that's kind of what it feels like. It's obviously used for sugar. There is some old sugar in there, lovely. Um, but yeah, used as like a sugar. It kind of reminds me of something you find in like a 50s American diner or something. But I think my nan might have had, maybe she's used this for multiple things or maybe she had more of these, but I seem to remember her even having like Parmesan cheese in here for when she made spaghetti bolognese, which is like one of her things she loved to make for us. What's up next? I know what these are and I think these are a bit offbeat, a bit quirky and a bit of an acquired taste probably <laughs> but, but these are going to be for my dining room so as I said my granddad was in the wine industry and I found this in one of their kitchen cupboards and I'm really into kind of old like Victorian apothecary bottles and stuff like that I really love the look of things like that this is not those, but it kind of reminded me of that a little bit and I just love what's in them. So it actually still has liquid in it. It is two different types of port from, one is from 1966 and one is from 1970. And it is a sample 195 and sample 196. So it still has the port in them. And yeah, they're just a bit apothecary bottle like. I really, really loved these as soon as I saw them. As I said, they're not obviously going to be to everyone's taste. They're a bit sticky. Um, and yeah, they're a bit offbeat. But I really like the idea of having them here in our dining room. It's where we're going to entertain the most. Um, 
we have a bit of kind of like a Bollinger theme anyway. Unintentionally, we painted this room green because of our fireplace. But then I felt like it reminded me of like the Bollinger bottle green and my granddad worked on Bollinger champagne and he passed away unfortunately just a few months after we moved in here. And so we have like the Bollinger bottles with the candles in and stuff like that. So I feel like this is something else that would look cool somewhere in here. I'm not quite sure yet. I think it might they might end up living somewhere that doesn't exist yet in here because we've not got a lot of furniture in here. But yeah, I really loved these. I loved the kind of old apothecary style and I feel like it's a bit of history. Like, what was it about this vintage pool in 1966 and 1970? Who knows? Aha, I found the spoon for the marmalade. It's just, again, like a little acrylic spoon, but I thought that was cute. If you look, kind of sits like that. I thought that was sweet. And that might be my favorite item almost. Then finally, I do have a couple of books that um, are home related. They're really old. And yeah, I thought you might be interested just because I thought they were kind of cool and that's why I kind of picked them up and held on to them. So first of all, I got this. So I'm really into dried flowers. In fact, I've got my dried hops behind me and then I've got some dried flowers right next to you right now. And my nan was really into flower arranging and stuff. I don't know when this is from. Oh, well, this was first published in 1984, but Lord knows when my, my nan got it, but it's dried flowers from your garden. And yeah, I'm really into dried flowers and I'm obviously really wanting to get into gardening a bit more. So. Yeah, it's all about how to preserve flowers, leaves, grasses, seed heads, lichens, and moss, and how to build them into long-lasting and attractive arrangements. Well, thank you, Nan. I hope I will be able to do something with this this year. <laughs> and then the other book that I thought was really cool is this. Food from your garden. So as I just said, James and I are trying to get into gardening more. Well, James already is quite into gardening, but I'm trying to get into gardening more and we are trying to grow more and stuff and this is a book i don't know it's quite old i would say when was this first published this was oh this is first edition first revise 1977 and it's basically like what to grow how to grow it and then what you can use it for afterwards and um, so it's really cool and I think one of the reasons why I love it as well is not only do I think it actually is going to be really useful. I know you can find all of this on the internet, but I quite like the idea of like looking at a book a bit as well. But this has lots of little like cuttings or like like notes and stuff in it from my nan. Obviously not to me, but I thought that was really sweet and yeah kind of was a little bit touching and interestingly James and I are about to grow potatoes and I opened this book up where that little paper bookmark is and surprisingly it is on I can't actually spin it around but it's on the potato page that's it from me today guys I just really wanted to share some of those items because I picked them up such a long time ago and I just wanted to share share what I've been buying for the or buying or collecting for the house thank you for joining me today I'm gonna finish off my cappuccino and uh, yeah find homes for some of these items that have been sat in a bag for a number of months but yeah happy Thursday everybody take care and see you again soon